Hello, welcome. We are so excited to have everyone join us for our brand new first launching of UBU Live at Studio B. And this is something that we've been looking forward to for the last, gosh, I would say five or six years. We've always wanted to create something um, synchronous and live and be able to be in every classroom in the Valley. And this uh, new platform is allowing us to, to reach more students, more teachers, and um, also create a connection that has never been probably started before is, is trying to create the second grade classrooms up in Vail and connect them with second grade classrooms all the way in Gypsum. So this is a really um, exciting new venture that UBU has, um, has started with the help of the school district and supported by Eagle Valley Behavioral Health. So second grade classrooms, I am introducing you to your second grade teacher from UBU. This is Amy May. Take it away, Amy. Thank you. Hi, guys. So like Anne-Marie said, my name is Amy, and I will be joining you weekly for these virtual classrooms. I'm really excited. Uh, we're going to be covering topics like mindfulness, emotions, um, tools to help us with our emotions, compassion, uh, which is a very big word, uh, for kindness, kindness to ourselves, kindness to others, and even talking about how our brain actually gets involved with all of this. So um, it is going to be a little different for me. I know I was saying I was really nervous because this is my first time teaching this way. Um, I'm used to being in the classrooms. So I'm still hoping to be able to interact with you guys, even though I might not be able to hear you. I can still see you. Uh, so I'm hoping to get feedback from you guys. You can use thumbs up, middle, down. You can nod your head. You can give me the, mm, mm. that will all work. I'll still see that and be able to use that. Um, so if I ask you a question, like, how are you guys doing today? You can respond with, let's see. Yeah. So let's try it again. How are you guys doing today? There it is. Okay, cool. There's actually a reason why I asked that, not just to start off this lesson. The reason is because we hear that question, or I know I hear that question, and I catch myself asking it all the time, so many times a day. And I started thinking and realizing how many times I respond automatically. Like, I don't really think. I just go, oh, good. Thanks. How are you? Or I'm fine. I'm okay. Or I, a lot of times I see the kids go, mm, mm. And then that's kind of it. So it's this automatic response. We don't really actually take a second to think, well, how am I doing? How am I feeling? And so that's kind of what I want to talk about today is to check in with ourselves to really answer that question. So a lot of times we are very familiar with our outer world. Uh, we use our five senses. So does everyone can someone or everyone actually point to one of their senses? There's five. Point to one. Yeah, right? So we have our sight, we have our smell, we have our, the sound, taste, and touch. So we use those to see what's happening around us. So right now behind my screen, I actually am really lucky. I have a big window and I look out at the leaves are changing and I can smell a candle that I have burning here. I can hear if I'm really quiet, the cars, driving outside. So we use all of these things to notice what's going on outside of us in our outer world. But a lot of times we don't notice our inner world. So this is my little explorer girl. So you're probably like, well, what is the inner world? Good question. Let's go there. You're gonna learn that I love <laughs> visuals. They really help me learn, they help me teach. So I try to use them a lot. So our inner world. That is when we explore our thoughts, our emotions, and body sensations. So we said that we use our five senses to notice what's going on outside of us. So what do you think we use to notice what's going on inside of us? These, these kind of give you a good clue. We notice what's going up up here in our brain for our thoughts. We can go down to our heart to notice what we are feeling. 
And then the body is basically how it sounds. Your overall body, what, it, what your body is trying to tell you. Those body sensations, what you're feeling in your body, that is your body's way of trying to speak to you. So let me just give you an example. For me, let's say that I see Anne Marie right now and I haven't seen her in a couple of days and she says, hi, Amy, how are you? Right? I would instinctively go, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Have a great day and continue walking away. But if I truly took just a couple seconds to check in with myself and see how I am, and I'll, this is totally real, I'll do this right now. Here's what you would find. Okay. My thoughts are, am I doing this right? Am I a good teacher? Um, am I gonna run out of time? There's a video I wanna show and, and I really hope I have enough time. Um, I'm thinking, am I talking too fast because I'm super excited? Uh, am I a good teacher? These are all the real-time thoughts going on in my brain right now. How I'm feeling is definitely nervous. Like I said, it's my first time teaching virtually like this and reaching so many kids at once, which is awesome. So I'm definitely feeling very nervous, but also really excited. I love teaching. I love bringing this to you kids. So it's kind of that mixture of maybe like a little bit of him. The nervous and excitement like a roller coaster like the first time you ever go on a roller coaster and you are so excited but you at the same time kind of feel like you might pee your pants that's literally how i feel right now just keeping it real with you guys okay body sensations this is how your body talks to you right so right now i feel like there's a million butterflies in my belly um, I can feel my heart is beating probably faster than normal i can notice that my breath is kind of a little bit faster and that makes sense right because i just said that's all that nervous energy all that nervous excitement so if all of a sudden i notice like oh man i'm i'm biting the side of my mouth or my stomach's in knots what's going on if i take a second to really check in i'm like oh i'm like super nervous right now or i'm so excited right now so it's your body's way of talking to you so let's try this out together, shall we? So let's try this again. How are you guys doing? So let's take a moment. Let's take a deep breath. This always helps me. I like to start with this. So take a deep breath in. Let it out. Okay. You can close your eyes if you feel comfortable, but if not, it's okay. You can just look down um, or look at your hands. It just kind of helps uh, minimize some of the outer world distractions. So looking down, eyes closed, you can put your hand on your forehead. Okay, notice those thoughts. What thoughts are up there? Now move it down to your heart. What emotions are there? Maybe excited, calm, bored, tired, angry, just notice. Okay, now scan your body and see what's going on there. Do you have butterflies like I do? Maybe you notice you have a little bit of a headache. Are you feeling hot or cold? Maybe your body just feels like a noodle because we're kind of tired. Just notice. Good. Okay, the takeaway with this something that I really want you to remember is the reason why it is so important to check in with your inner world is because all of these things come into play with how you act, how you behave, things that you might say or do. So let me say this again. It is really important to learn to check in with yourself because it'll affect how you behave, the things that you say and do to others and to yourself. So that is a really good point that I want you to remember for today. So good way to remember it, told you I like visuals, is by using the image of stoplight. Yeah. So when I can, I like to throw in really fun facts that you can bring to the dinner table or tell your grandma and grandpa when they pick you up from school or your sibling. I didn't know this, I had to Google this. Did you know, let's see, there we go, that there are over 300,000 stoplights in the US? I didn't know that. 
Guess how many we have in Eagle? Yeah, not that much. For all you studying math, right? We'd be like in this value place. We only have a handful, but they are important. Why? Well, because the obvious reasons. When we're driving our cars, they help tell us what to do. They keep not only us safe, but everyone around us safe, right? They tell you if you can go or if you stop. And so how can we use this with this? Well, let's find out. So green means go. That is basically that whatever you are feeling and everyone always jumps in with like, oh, it's when I'm happy. Yeah, that's kind of the easy one, but it doesn't have to be that. It can be all sorts of things. It can be when you're feeling happy, calm, tired, sad, whatever it is, you are still able to be here. You're still able to learn. You're still able to play and to focus and participate. So you're still noticing and feeling all of those feelings, but you're still in control and able to continue on with your life. So it might be, um, let's see, I'm really tired today. I had a soccer game last night and I stayed up too late. And so then I was rushing and I didn't eat enough for breakfast. And so I'm really kind of hungry. And then I'm sort of annoyed with my classmate over there because he keeps tapping the pencil and it's sort of distracting to me. So I'm all of those things, but I'm still able to be here right now. I'm still able to sit in my classroom. I'm still, still able to watch this video. Um, I'm still able to play with my friends. So you're still in control. So that is green. Yellow. Yellow is, actually I have, yellow is my favorite one. I personally think this is the most important one. I could do a whole lesson on this. And in fact, I think we actually might be doing a lesson on this. Yellow is slow down, caution, right? Caution, it's telling us, are you gonna go or are you gonna stop? And then usually when I'm in class and I teach, this is my favorite part because you, there's at least one kid who yells at, yellow is when my dad floors it through the light, right? Okay, it totally can be. You, you can choose, you know, depending on what's going on around you to continue to go or to slow down and stop. So basically what it's telling you though, and this is kind of, this is absolutely going into our inner world. It's saying, hey, hold up. Notice what's going on around you before you choose to go, to proceed with what you're doing or to stop and take a minute, right? It's that one little moment of like, okay, hold on, what's going on? Is it safe to go or do I need to stop? So this could be like, my heart starts beating a little bit faster and, and I can kind of notice that um, I'm starting to have these thoughts in my head on, I, I'm not so sure I can do this. And I don't know, um, you know, I'm just not really feeling comfortable right now. I, I don't really know if I can take this. And it's getting really hard to, to focus because there's all these thoughts and, and it's getting really hard for me. And, and then I start to notice that I'm not really breathing that well. And, and there's these butterflies and, and I'm here, but it's just really hard for me to truly be here. And, and I keep getting distracted. And, and then I start talking really fast because, or maybe I'm just so excited because I'm just so excited. And I have so much to say and, and I just can't stop it. It just keeps coming, coming, and coming, coming. And then all of a sudden, I don't know why, because I'm sitting in a solid chair, but I just find myself bouncing, right? Because I mean, I don't know why there's just so much in here. And then, and then I start tapping my pencil. All of those things can be the yellow, where those feelings kind of pick up in intensity, but you're still here, right? You're still able to sort of focus. It might be getting harder, but you're still able to do that. So this yellow, super important. Again, you need to decide that if you're able to go and proceed or stop, because just like in real life, this can turn real quick to red. This yellow can go to red like that. And same with our inner world. So I'm gonna pause on yellow because I wanna to get to red and we'll probably come back to yellow because like I said, I think it's so important. Okay, so red. Well, red means stop, right? Red is when whatever it is that we're feeling gets so intense that it just kind of overtakes us and we don't feel like we're in control anymore. And it could get to the point where we can hurt ourselves or hurt others. So 
I like to use, because he's just, I mean, he was created for this role, right? This is anger. And he is my Mr. Red. I like to use him as my little mascot, right? Because when you're in the red, I feel like I literally look like this. And this is how I act, <laughs> right? Where you just get overcome with your emotions. So this could be, I am so angry. I am so angry that I pushed my classmate or I punched my brother. Or maybe it's, I am so jealous. I am so sad right now that I say something incredibly hurtful to my friend. And I know it's hurtful and I say it anyway, because that's a point. That's red. When we can get to that point where we just get so overcome that we can hurt ourselves or others. So, all right, like I said, told you I'd come back to this. So now we've covered all of them. We've covered green, covered green, yellow, and red. But yellow, again, to me is the most important one because once again, remember, it gives you the power. It gives you the power to choose. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna continue on? And that's okay, right? Sometimes it's totally good to continue on in the yellow. Um, you kind of have to evaluate that for yourself. As long as you feel uh, safe and you know that others are safe around you, sometimes it's really healthy to work through that yellow. But other times maybe it's not and you can feel yourself feel that just building, building, building. And you're like, I'm gonna, where's my little guy? I'm gonna go like this. My head's gonna explode any second if I don't help myself. So you need to decide, it gives you the power, it gives you the power of choice. Am I gonna proceed or am I gonna stop? So with that, I want to, what? Oh, I think I just heard someone say, well, how do we move? from the red and the yellow into the green? Good question. Thank you for asking. Let's go there. Well, there's no one answer. I wish there was, but there's not. I have a magic answer. I like to call it magic because when you use it, it actually works like magic. That was my little joke. It's your breath. And I know it sounds simple, but I love to start with your breath, just like we did a couple of minutes ago with the self check in when I had us take a deep breath. I call it the magic breath. We're going to get into this in the next couple lessons, so I don't want to give away too much, but basically it's really cool when you take a breath and not like this, because if you say I'm taking a breath, Amy, it is not working. No, that totally won't work. In fact, that might make things a little bit worse. It has to be those slow <sighs> breaths. Because when you do that, what it's actually doing is it's talking to your brain, to your command center up here. Seriously, it really is. I know it sounds so simple. That's why it's magic. That breath signals your brain. And what it's saying is, hold up, take a minute. It's all good you're safe, we can start the process of calming down. So that is my magic answer. But as far as the rest of it, you kind of have to, just like that little explorer girl that I had right here, you kind of have to play detective and discover for yourself what works for you. Because what works for me might not work for you. Um, I have some examples though that are some of my favorites. Hugs. I'm going to try to sneak this into a future lesson because there's a really cool um, reason behind, again, with your brain, why hugs actually feel so good and help us. It actually triggers part of your brain. So maybe it's you need a hug. Maybe it's um, writing, writing a journal, writing songs, writing poems. Maybe for you, when you are feeling all those emotions, you need something to help you work through them. You just want to run. You just want to get out there and exercise. Maybe it's snuggling with your puppy dog. Who doesn't love that? I actually have mine. This is Cooper. He's my little teaching buddy. It always helps us. Maybe it's talking with a friend. Maybe for you, you like being alone because that's where you process everything. So again, you need to figure out what works for you and use those tools when you are in the yellow, when you are in the red, or just to help keep yourself in the green. So I have three takeaways for today. I want you, these are things that I'm gonna ask you to practice this week. You can practice it as a class. 
um, bring this home. Talk to your parents, teach it to your brother, sister, grandparents, whoever, teach it to your soccer team or football team. So I want you to practice noticing your inner world, right? Notice your thoughts, notice your emotions, notice what your body is trying to tell you. And then I want you to remember the stoplight. Then start to really pay attention when people say, hey, how you doing today? How you doing, kiddo? It still might automatically come out good. And then be like, ah, here it is again. Okay, just take one second and just notice where you are. Are you a green? Are you a yellow? Are you a red? Just noticing. And then discover this week, what are some of the tools that work for you to help you out with those uh, feelings of strong, strong, strong emotion when you're in the yellow, when you're in the red. So those are my takeaways for you. Um, let's see. Yes, I was hoping, it looks like we still have time. Uh, I would like to show you. So I said that breathing in your breath is like magic. So there's so many cool, I'm sure you know a bunch of them, but there's so many cool different types of breathing techniques and tools that you can use. Uh, we did a video with some two cute little girls and they are gonna show you roller coaster rest. So I wanna try to play that for you. So it's again, another tool that you can use uh, to help you start to calm down using your brain. So let's see, I think Amory's gonna be able to pull it up for us. And this is roller coaster rest. This is a really fun one to um, teach your brothers or sisters or your best friend. Maybe. And if not, it's recorded in the link so your teacher can always show you later. I don't know if it's working or not. Is it working, Aunt Amory? There you Hi, go. My name is Grace. Hi, my name is Lily. And we will be showing you roller coaster rides. Yay! First, you'll take one hand and spread it out wide. Then you'll take your pointer finger and start at the base of your thumb. And then while you breathe, and then while you go up, you show breathe in. And out, you show, while going down, you should slowly exhale. And repeat. And then, as you breathe in for the pinky, you pretend it's a roller coaster and you may, while you exhale, whee! If you want to do that, you can. And you can use this if you're sad, sad, mad, or or if you're feeling out of control, or just at any given time. Yeah, I even do it when I go to sleep, and it really helps you relax. Bye bye. bye. Hope you enjoyed our video. Perfect. Great. Thank you for showing that, Amory. So. Again, um, teachers, this will be included in the invitation link for this. So if you want to play this again for your class uh, throughout the week as a reminder, um, or kiddos, if you want to see it one more time uh, as a reminder or just to show you. But I like how they say something to know, and I know we're getting close on time. Something to know. A lot of times, again, um, it's those really big, strong emotions that kind of take the spotlight with all of this anger, sadness, but you can use these tools with the other ones. You can use them when you're laying in bed and your mind just is having a hard time going to sleep. Try the breathing tools. It again, triggers your brain to start to calm down. A little tip, depending on where you are, right? On the stoplight, it might take more than one breath. So if you take a breath and you're like, this is not working, don't get discouraged keep with it, do a couple more. Sometimes those feelings build up so much that it takes a couple breaths. It takes some minutes to bring them back down. But you guys, I'm so excited. We officially did our first virtual classroom. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you teachers for taking the time to share this with your students. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I can't wait to see you next week. Oh, and a short little plug. My friend Rachel will be doing virtual field trip Wednesdays. Yay, starting tomorrow morning, and I'm gonna be doing them in the afternoon. So something, again, to look forward to. Um, hope you can join us. See you next week. Thank you, guys.